camera always starts by itself and then I'm sitting here like I'm not ready <laughs> I'm not ready to start but I don't like to edit videos because I'm lazy so I'm just gonna go ahead and start basically I want to talk something through I want to talk this through because I'm kind of integrating this activation about multiverse theory it would be the word to use right and to be clear none of this is new it's not new to me and i don't think it's really new to you guys but it's like it's this is like integrating into my human experience more fully instead of just being something i'm aware of i'm aware of like on a cognitive intellectual level it's like i'm starting to experience it very viscerally and like smoothly in my everyday experience and that's where it gets weird right so what do I mean? I mean that multiverse theory in the sense that anything that can happen will happen and that we're not just talking about past lives and future lives and parallel lives in other planets or other dimensions and stuff like that. We're literally talking about all of the different iterations of me, like literally me, this version of Shy in this body with this sequence of DNA with the same parents and, and all of that stuff. Living out an, I don't know if it's infinite or nearly infinite, <laughs> like sequence of lives um, essentially all at the same time. And I mean, uh, this has been something I was first, and, and I, I was first introduced to this idea back in like 2016 when I binge watched all of Rick and Morty. There was only two seasons of Rick and Morty back then, but I did nothing but watch those two seasons of Rick and Morty for like a year. So if you're, if you happen to be brand new to multiverse theory and you're wondering like, what would it be like to have other versions of me like out there in some parallel reality? If you like adult animation, <laughs> um, you know, cartoons for adults, Rick and Morty, man, that's where it's at. Um, and it's like spiritually activating. I was having these like 5D activations back then when I didn't even know anything about this, like from watching that cartoon. So anyway, <laughs> so that's how long I've been integrating this, right? It's 2022 now and I've been integrating this since like 2016, but it's finally starting to come down out of the cloud, out of my mind, so to speak, and into my experience. And it's starting to click so in such a strange way. So what do I mean? I mean that, okay, I'm gonna use a very specific example about like that, that I've been working through. So When I was a kid, like when I was a little kid, I was in grade two, so I would have been like seven, right? I was seven, even six, six or seven. I was in grade two, six or seven. Um, the first, what, what am I even trying to say? Th this, this person that I met, one of the kids at school was one of the first like close soul family members that I had ever met, but I was terrified of him. I, he was actually like my reading buddy, you know, in school, like when you have reading buddies, he was a grade older than me and he was sitting down to help me read. And I remember I just started crying because I like, I was like so shy, right? I was so shy, which funny, haha, -ha, right? My name is Shyla and I am so shy. And now I go, I go by shy more often than Shyla. And yeah, that, that was great in elementary school. Trust me, all the kids pointing and laughing at me going, your mom called you Shyla because you're shy. Anyway, so I was so shy that I was just crying. And he was of course like, a little boy himself and he didn't know how to deal with a crying girl right so it was really awkward and I ended up knowing this guy all through school and we sat next to each other in band in high school and we like sat next to literally right beside each other for years and we never we could never figure out how to have a conversation I don't think I ever had one single com proper conversation with this dude um, but I always felt so like drawn into his energy. Like I didn't understand it at the time. I never really had a crush on him or anything, but it was like, I was drawn, drawn towards him. I felt drawn towards him. And he was <laughs> such like a weird thing. Um, and he suddenly like blasted into my mind yesterday. And I was like, that's so weird. I haven't thought about this guy like since high school, right? Um, 
<laughs> but I, then I could like see an entire like an entire sequence of lives, an entire group of timelines where me and this guy ended up like living out our lives together as a couple. Like we were in a relationship, and I was like, that is bizarre, right? Um, and but so I understood that, like, because he was like a soul family person that I I met very early on in life, and if we had both been like aligned, if we had both been ready, then we could have actually clicked and synchronized then and lived lived out our lives together. But since neither of us were in that neither of us were like calibrated for that right we ended up living completely different lives and we've gone on to live and like i wouldn't i wouldn't want to be with him now i don't think that that's a better version of my life i like the life that i'm living now and i think this is what i want to be doing and i'm glad my life worked out this way but I could, I was like, I could like see, I could like, like, like now I literally have memories of this life with this other person. And that's just like one tiny example. That's just the one I'm using because that, that like just blasted into my mind like two days ago. And it was just like, I could remember, I could remember this whole life, like b bits and pieces of this whole life. They were coming through like, like I'm getting pretty used to re like recalling past life memories and I understand what those are like now and they come in very smoothly and I can notice them and integrate them. But this is like, so parallel life memories coming, coming through, coming in. And I, now I understand that there's like constant branches, just constant branches. And I have this strange sensation that the, the, this life, like the version of me that is talking to you in this video is kind of like the tree trunk, that this is somehow the tree trunk life <laughs> and all of these other lives where I have done different things. So like when I've married different people, I've had different career paths or when I never had this kind of spiritual awakening, um, never got into tarot cards, never got into a any of this type of stuff. When I just took different paths, though, it's like I can see, I can see those lives as these little branches off of the trunk. And those lives, they're kind of what I would call dead end lives, not because they were bad. They were actually, a lot of these lives were very good, very satisfying. And some of them even have, some of them even have things that I like more than this life, right? Some of them, they have, the, they all have their pros and cons. They all have their pros and cons. So they have good things, right? Like, like so some lives were just really relaxing, really chill where nothing really happened. And I was just really satisfied with just living my kind of like home life, right? Some of them I got to do really cool things. Some of them I have a fantastic career, all, these, all of these different things that I do, but they're all kind of dead end lives because I just like live them and then I die like a normal life. It's, they're just normal, completely normal lives. And I call them like dead ends, not because they're bad, but because that's it. It's just like a life lived. And then I exit my body and, you know, return. <laughs> but but it, I see them actually as branching out out of like the column of light that is this life. I I don't know. Maybe maybe every time we have a life, we we always have this sensation of like this life being the tree trunk, this life being the central column. But I don't know. I I, I have this like I'm still working through this, so I like I don't have answers, right? I just have my speculation. <laughs> but it's like I feel that. This is the life where I have done the most work, like evolving my consciousness and connecting into higher realms. So it's like in this life, I am channeling more light. I am like a brighter pillar. I am a, I have a bigger bandwidth. Like I have, and, and it's not necessarily because I have done anything that special in this life. It's actually because of all of these other lives, because of all these other tree trunk lives or like branching lives, right? Because of all of these other branching lives that have branched, branched off the tree trunk. They're like these little dead end lives, but they all served a purpose. They all did something. Like I learned something in every single one of those lives. I have an experience in every single one of those lives and they all feed back into this life. And now I'm able, I'm like connecting into all of them. It's like all of the branches are connecting into me, the tree trunk. <laughs> and I'm like, have, having to like rapidly integrate all of these experiences and all of these lessons and learning like why things happened and and, and it's really crazy because I can think of like Every time I had a dream in this life, like, you know, just think of when you're in high school and you have a crush on somebody. It's like in some life you actually lived your whole life with them, right? Or imagine you had this dream of going to do something incredible. And in some of your lives, you actually did go do that. <laughs> like it's guaranteed. If you ever had a big dream about something or a big wish or a big desire in some life somewhere, you have actually done it in multiple timelines, perhaps, right? It, it's, it, it's happened. It's real. That's why. So it, in this life, it maybe it felt like you were dreaming or having this wish, but you're actually that feeling of having a dream. That's it's actually like it's a memory, right? It felt like a dream, but from another perspective, it is a memory that was coming in from another life, right? Like a memory of the future or a memory of a parallel life, right? It was 
this experience was flowing in and since you had no other way of processing it, you processed it as a dream or as a fantasy or as an imagination. Um, and it's really incredible. So it's mind boggling, but it also kind of takes the FOMO out of life because you realize that you literally get to do it all. You literally get to do it all. Like you can live this life. You are living this life, this exact life out as many times as you want to. And it's not, and it's not like an endurance thing. It's not like these things are being, not like your lives are being lived out consecutively. Like you're going to be here for billions of years living out the same life, like Groundhog Day type of thing. It's like, no, because your higher consciousness is a parallel processing network. So you're actually like, like doing them all at once, right? This is not linear processing. This is parallel quantum processing, right? You're living it, doing them all at once. So nothing is lost. Nothing is missed. You've actually lived it all and done it all. And the way I'm kind of seeing it right now is, so it's not just about like this one life being this column or this tree trunk. It's There's actually, I'm seeing multiple columns, multiple tree trunks. So that's actually going to be the next layer to this experience. So right now, if I'm having this experience of being the tree trunk and connecting in with all of these lives that branch off of this one life theme, if I could call the kind of life I've lived in this body a theme, right? There's gonna, there's other columns. I'm seeing them going around in like a big circle. There's other columns out there that are other like groups. It's like, I think you could group up all of your lives. Like maybe there are specific, like major choice points in your life. So one thing would be like, you know, for example, like what high school you go to has a big impact on the rest of your life because of all the people you meet, right? What university you go to, what career you go into, who, what, who you have relation, like long, long relationships with, what continent you move to, right? All of these things are massive choice points. And every single one of those has, it, it like ends up being like a column. Every single one of these groups of lives has a central tree trunk, a central column. And then there's all these little like, like dead end lives that aren't bad, they're actually really good because they're exploratory lives and they're lives that have like, it's like every single one of these dead end or branch lives has some type of purpose, some type of thing to be discovered, some type of thing to be explored, right? So, and then the next thing is to take all of these tree trunks or all of the columns and then they all connect up. Then that, they connect up up here and what's up here, that's your soul star chakra, right? That's where your higher self integrates all of this. So it all goes onwards and upwards to be braided back together in a braid of innumerable strands. So I don't know. It's like things just got really weird. And this is clearly, <laughs> clearly a theme a lesson and experience that takes years to integrate. Because like I said, I first had experiences of connecting with like the parallel shies back in 2016 and it's 2022 at the time I'm recording this. So this takes a long time and it used to be something that was just, it, it's like, it's been coming down, it's been coming down, it's been coming down. Cause it used to be something I would just imagine. And then I would think, wow, it really is real. There really are all of these different versions of me out there. And then it was just something I was aware of, something I thought about, but now, and then I would get like crazy, like it would, like I, I used to be able to connect with these parallel versions of myself in dreams. I would have dreams of actually going through the quantum tunnel where I would be like out in the quantum and I'd literally be in the tunnel and in the tunnel there'd be these bright holes and if you just focus on the hole, like on focus on the bright light, if you, if you go into the bright light when you get close enough to it, you realize it's a hole in the side of the quantum tunnel and you go in and you can just tunnel down into a reality and it's crazy. I've so I've literally done that in like lucid dreaming, gone into different lifetimes. And some of them are so boring, like lives where I just became like a suburban housewife and like did all the things I hate, like cooking Thanksgiving dinner for everyone and just being like a completely normal, like repressed, so repressed, so repressed person living, living the life, you know, by society's standards and just never having any courage to ever be myself. And like, to me, that's like the biggest, the biggest nightmare because I was not happy in that life, right? I was not happy because I was cooking a turkey and I don't cook Thanksgiving dinner, guys. That is not me. <laughs> that is not me. <laughs> that's my nightmare life, cooking a Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> anyway, so, but now it's like, it's like they're, they're bleeding right into, it, it, you know, it can feel a little bit like losing your mind, but luckily at this point, 
I've had so many years of lessons of distinguishing between what is actually losing your mind, <laughs> right? What is like actually need help, right? <laughs> and what is a mystical, spiritual, energetic, interdimensional experience. So I'm confident in my own ability to discern. Um, but you know, if, if, um, if you haven't had experiences of being trained <laughs> to discern like what's losing your mind and what's a real spiritual experience, this kind of stuff can be super strange because I can feel this like bleeding into my reality where like I have memories of living in another place with different people and, and it's like I can remember the life and I can remember what it's like, but it's not really a memory because it's like happening right now, some other version of myself. So. It's very interesting. I'm, I'm excited for this because it's very interesting and because it's also just a stepping stone to this next level of where you get up here <laughs> and all of these tree trunk lives, all of these columns integrate and it's just another step in the process of doing whatever it is that we're doing here with our consciousness. So I just wanted to talk that out. It really helps me to actually sit in front of the camera and talk it out, to talk it out. Cause it's interesting. I was just thinking that I can't really understand something until I articulate it. That's that. <laughs> this is the curse of my eighth house Gemini moon because Gemini moon wants to articulate the thought, right? To explain it in a clear, simple way. Of course, clear and simple is uh, something I almost never managed to accomplish, but you know, that's the quest. The quest is to explain and articulate something in a clear and simple way. The trouble is that my eighth house Gemini moon is in the eighth house, which means I am constantly perpetually on this quest of articulating the unseen, articulating the unknown, articulating and explaining what's beyond the veil, what's on the other side of the black hole, right? So this, this really helps me, this helps me. And so thank you for anyone who listened. Sending you lots of love and light, bye.